For a very long time, Steam has had its hands in the dough as well as its finger on the pulse of the global gaming community that it has been growing since the middle of the 2000s. So it's wise for us to keep up on Steam's evolution and their probatory strides as one of the biggest digital marketplaces on the planet. This is Cosmo and today we're going to talk about the Spring Cleaning event. From the 21st of May till the 28th, 2020, Steam ran a special something they called the Spring Cleaning event. For Steam fans used to sales, they were hoping this was a preview of the upcoming yearly and highly anticipated Steam Summer Sale, but this wasn't it. The Spring Cleaning was an event powered by AI machine learning and data from each user's Steam profile. It featured 7 sets of 3 games each that Dewey, the mascot for the event, was asking you to pick from, install and play. There was no time limit for how much you should play, just that the game was successfully started and the categories of choices presented to you ranged from new games you bought but never played, games you played at one point but haven't played in a while, and even a selection of the first games you ever installed on your Steam account. There was no sale on those chosen games or anything other than that, just Steam asking you to play games and rewarding you with a few Steam XP and a badge. For us to understand why this is special, we have to understand what Steam has been doing of late and what their goals are. One of the features that very closely ties into this event is the Interactive Recommender system. Quoting from its Steam page, Explore personalized recommendations from a machine learning system based on your Steam gameplay history as compared to millions of other players. Basically, Steam guesstimates what games you'd like to play based on your buying and playing patterns for how long you played said games as well as other variables from across multiple data sources, but the concept is that this is a very targeted effort, not a scattershot one. This new feature builds upon a lot of similar, but not the same, features for recommending games to players on the platform, like the discovery queue, which is pretty well entrenched by this point, and should be considered the precursor of the current interactive recommender system. It was based on recommending products more generally and less targeted on you as a person and your patterns. On the other end of the spectrum, we have curators and the curated lists made by them, which allows influential users and organizations to create custom lists of games that they can recommend to people to play. Put next to Deep Dive and the Play Next Shelf, core of the matter is that Steam is really trying to put more games in front of you. To play, but specifically to buy. And water is wet, right? Why is that a big deal? Well, it's important because, as mentioned, the Spring Cleaning event focuses on games you already own and makes no intention or push for you to buy anything, which, in the context of all the systems I mentioned before, seems off. But it's only strange if we don't consider this as a first step towards a paradigm shift. The people out there that play games have changed, and so has the market. Sets of free games get given out freely on Humble Bundle, GOG and the Epic Store. Backlogs of unplayed games are mean. Games themselves keep releasing at a very rapid pace, with the qualitative gap between indie games and just regular publisher house games becoming smaller and smaller as the tech required becomes cheaper and more accessible. It's also true that gamers as a demographic have been seeing an upward shift in age across the board. The Entertainment Software Association surveyed in 2019 that the average gamer is 32 years old and of the total gamers more than 70% are over 18 years of age. Older gamers have more money than time and they may choose to spend it in games of the same niche they've been playing or even in the same games altogether. The new generation of gamers which grew up in the melting pot of thousands of games with dozens of monthly releases are also less interested in the plethora of games available on Steam, free or otherwise, and have their interests aligned more to a few specific games which take up most of the time, usually games sold as a service, with more than half of all gamers choosing to spend their time in replayable multiplayer matches instead of one-and-done single-player games. With those numbers being what they are, Steam, while in no measure endangered, has seen that the marketplace has been changing speeds for a few years now. Gamers just aren't playing a lot of games. They're playing a lot of specific games, but not a lot of games. Steam sales work, and have worked since they were introduced as a measure of selling more games, but we've reached a point where people don't even buy games anymore, even on sale. Sales which Steam by this point have been putting out almost once a month for the past few years. We should also add that Steam often sees nothing out of games on its platform which are monetized with microtransactions, with the money often bypassing Steam altogether and going straight to the publisher through the in-game store. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying game sales are down, or that Steam isn't making money. The reality is far from it, with Steam seeing revenue increases year to year. However, 
Those increases are very often attributed to single games and sources. Out of all the games on Steam, more than half of Valve's revenue was delivered by top 100 titles, and sometimes a good fraction can be attributed to even a single game, like PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds Thunderous Rise to Power in 2017. What this translates to is that Valve is relying on a few handful of games to provide revenue for Steam. That is a problem. The middle ground of good games but not blockbusters just don't get the attention required to be able to get the sales, which hurts both the developers as well as Valve itself in the long run. With that said, Steam's pushes into machine learning and targeted video game recommendations fill in the gaps in the story. We'll start to see a paradigm shift with Steam trying to get gamers more engaged with other games and gaming as a whole, and drawing them into the hobby of gaming itself instead of just spending time playing a video game. Metaphorically, for once there's more games than gamers, this opens the door to where Steam in the future might reward or recommend you trying unplayed owned games as well as giving motivation to return to previously played games past just recommending new game releases and hoping you'll bite. It's a form of growing the market and given the ownership over their platform and the very strong and varied avenues they have available to engage the customer base, they have all the opportunity they need to succeed. A gamer which re-engages, a gamer which goes back to games and spends more time with a hobby will be more inclined to give certain other games a shot. Maybe they'll like it and then maybe they'll buy new games. In the end, this whole deal may be seen as good or bad depending on which side of the fence you are in regards to big data, targeted content and the resource value of human attention. But this is what's happening today and the least we can do is try to understand it. Hope you guys found this video informative, please do leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of these analysis on what's going on with games and in the gaming industry at large. This was Cosmo, signing off.